my family, um, they're very um, supportive. I grew up in a very small country town in northern New South Wales. Um, I had a great upbringing. I had a loving family. Um, I say I was probably agnostic. Mm -hmm. So um, I didn't really tell them about my journey because it was really inner journey rather than, um, you know, telling everyone about what I was thinking about doing. And I started about 2008. So when um, I told them in 2010, they already um, had sensed that there was some changes within. So um, they handled it really good. And I would say that we're probably closer now that I'm a Muslim mm. yeah. than That's before. Cool. Very interesting. <laughs> um, you're about a terrorist attack that is carried out in the name of Allah. What, what does that, how does that resonate with you? And, and how far removed is that sort of behaviour from your actual religion? Um, I feel sad because I would feel sad if any innocent person died overseas or here. Um, doesn't matter what religion, any innocent person's death is quite sad. But I also feel sad because my religion is misrepresented and um, I know in myself what Islam is, but um, you can't really show that on a 30 second news clip every mm. night. So um, it's quite complex. Mm. And I, I feel like quite sad because I'm going to be representing Islam and people are going to look at me like I'm linked to terrorism. So <laughs> yeah. that's not how I want my life to be and how I want my son's life to be when he grows up. So yeah. um, it's quite sad. It's is that, you know, the, the media and, in fact, the public, I think, concentrate on, on the excesses of a particular group of, of Muslims. Right, regards yeah. to the treatment of women, for example, regards to, uh, you know, terrorist activity. Mm -hmm. But we don't look at the Irish, for example, <laughs> who blew each other up for, you know, a hundred years and say, oh, it's because they're Christians, they're all terrorists, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. we, we don't look at...